All right, welcome back to my bass tone series. This is part two. So if you haven't seen part one, I'll make sure to link it in the description below. Maybe put a little card up here or something like that. Um, but I talk through all my pedals, my pedal board, my bass, my strings, all that kind of stuff before recording, right? But now in part two, we're gonna hop into Pro Tools. And now that we've recorded our bass, I'll talk through EQ, compression, all that good stuff. So let's dive in. Here is just the bass. Let me turn off all the plugins. This is the sound we're getting from the pedal board, from the tone hammer. Here we go. Not bad, but definitely pretty cloudy. Need some help, right? Need some work. So first step, I like to throw on an SSL style EQ. I usually start by low passing it a little bit. And then some areas I'm looking to carve out are usually between three and 400, that kind of like woofy sound. So that sounds like this. That area you wanna be careful because it does still hold some of those fundamental harmonics for our root notes. So we don't wanna take out too much, but we do wanna make a little space there. So that's kind of the first area I'm looking at. The next area I'm looking at is kind of the honky, cardboardy, mid-range, boxy sound. That sounds like this. For this song, it was around 900. Next, we're looking for that kind of annoying string noise, mid-range kind of upper mid-range kind of thing. On this song, it was around 3K. Maybe more like two, two and a half. As you can see, both of those were on the narrower side of cuts. Don't wanna take out huge swaths of frequencies. And then to bring back a little of the articulation, I usually do a bell around six-ish K. Now that we've taken out some of the annoying upper mid-range, I wanna make sure that the top end is still well articulated, right? So. Nice, that sounds much better. Next, let's move on to compression. I usually go for like an LA-2A style compressor. I'm looking for like three to five max dB of gain reduction. Five is usually when like I kick the micro synth on. Three is a little more normal. You don't want to over compress bass. We already have some compression from the tone hammer. We already have like a little bit of that glue from the RNDI really subtly. And because we have fresh strings, we already have plenty of sustain and low end. We basically just want to keep the dynamic level in check, keep it consistent and make sure our, you know, our sustain, our low end is nice and full, right? So that's what we're trying to accomplish with the compression here. Next, I'll usually throw on something like our bass. I also really like Manny M Tone Shaper or something like, I don't know, max bass or low air. I've never really used low air, to be honest, but our bass is just gonna help us kind of get that subharmonic extension going. Obviously we want as much low end out of the source tone as possible, but this will help just really like make the subs blow up. You can definitely take it too far, but here's without. And here's with. So it's just helping us get that super full, like bottom 40 Hertz. Yeah, so pretty cool. Next, I will do a little bit more surgical and like dynamic EQ on a Pro Q3. And then in my like mixing template, I'll do some resonant filtering on like the bass bus as a whole, like which groups together like sub bass or anything like that. But for this video, obviously it's just this channel. And so I popped a little resonant filter on the goal of this is to get the kick and the bass to live in their respective places and to, you know, to not have to fight for space quite as much. And it just gives us, yeah, it just gives us a little bump down there where the R bass is, is really pumping, which is cool. And then those mid range cuts kind of help get rid of some weird resonances here and there. So here's without. <laughs> 
And here's with... And then I, even though we already have a pretty dirty signal, I always throw on a little bit of decapitator at the end there, just to give it a little extra teeth. I like it, you know? And then finally, I will usually have some sort of side chain compression that's being triggered by the kick drum, just so the kick doesn't have to fight for quite as much space. And it also kind of tricks our ear into thinking that the, the bass, like the timing of the bass is a little like tighter if it's not tight, you know? So it helps kind of glue the bass to the drum kit and makes it feel super locked in, which I love. So I will solo up the drums. In this session, I just have a drum stem because I was just playing along to a song that's already been mixed and recorded and all that stuff. But usually in my mix template, obviously I'm sending the kick just by itself to this bus. But the workaround I'm doing is I'm sending the entire drum kit to this kick sidechain bus to send, right? And then in Pro Tools, the native compressor, we can actually filter our sidechain detector and so I just am doing a low pass down to 60 hertz, basically. So the sidechain detector is only listening to 60 hertz and below, which is our kick drum. So got the drum soloed up. Here is without the sidechain compression. And then here's with. makes it feel super locked into the drums, which is awesome. One more time, here is no plugins at all, just straight from the board with the drums. All right, and here is all the processing on. time without and back in boom so we you know obviously we've taken a couple steps we could have maybe done it a little simpler but sometimes I like to make those little small adjustments rather than try to do everything it at once with one plugin or, or whatever. Same kind of philosophy like I was talking about with the pedal board is all of these little things from the type of string we use to the pickup to if we use the RNDI or whatever, they're all making these tiny little adjustments that eventually get us to where we wanna be, which is awesome. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful as you are playing bass, as you're building a pedal board, as you're recording bass and mixing. If you're interested in purchasing any of the pedals or any of the stuff that I have on my board, I'll put some links in the description. If you use these links, I do earn a small commission, but you're not paying any extra. You're paying the same price that you would. It's just a way that you can help support the channel if you want to. Another way you can support the channel is if you like this video and to make sure you don't miss out on any future videos, make sure you are subscribed. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.